A very good morning to Melbourne Storm CEO Dave Donaghy. Dave, thank you so much for joining us on our Fox League FaceTime. Uh, you've even got the suit on. We really appreciate you looking so uh, so great so early in the morning. Now, it's a really troubling time for our game. What was your reaction and, and when did you first find out that this competition would be suspended indefinitely? Well, thanks, Savon. Thanks for having me on. Um, I'll have to apologise for the uh, lack of shave. It's been some uh, long hours at the moment, but... Um, Look, uh, like a lot of people, we um, uh, you know, we, we found out um, late yesterday. Um, we understood, you know, there was uh, you know a number of significant meetings going on up in Sydney, and look, uh, it, at times it felt like it was, um, you know, you're, you're plugging holes, uh, you know, during the day. Um, at that point, I think it, you know, it quickly became apparent and evident to us that it was going to be untenable quite soon. So, um, look, uh, it wasn't something that I suppose surprised us. Um, I think for us, we knew it was coming at some point. And, um, you know, we put a, a, a submission into the ARLC a week or two before um, around potential scenarios that when the time comes, yeah, this is something our, our industry needs to look at. So, look, it, it didn't surprise us, I suppose, but, uh, you know, it's still a shock when it, uh, when it does come. The Melbourne Storm always seemed to be ahead of the curve. You mentioned that submission there. Did you feel like this was just a sense of foreboding? And, and given that you are based in Victoria, the AFL, they were very uh, resistant to continue. Um, do you think that perhaps the Melbourne Storm were were prepared and, and not as shocked as the rest of us? Well, look, I, th I think we've had, um, you yeah, know, we've got strong relationships with government uh, at all levels. You know, Josh Frydenberg's our number one ticket holder. I think he's doing an amazing job as treasurer at the moment, as Scott Morrison, as prime minister. Um, Tim Pallas, the treasurer of Victoria, is a great friend of uh, Melbourne Storm. And certainly through our, uh, our discussions with uh, senior levels of, uh, of all governments, we've been trying to get an understanding of what the impact this may have, not just on our, uh, on our uh, business ourselves, but on the potential impact of the industry. And also the potential impact on the community. And, um, you know, it was about a month ago that dawned on us that this is significant. Um, you know, a couple of months ago, we were talking internally, myself and our doctor, um, uh, Frank Panisi, who was overseas at the time, about the potential impact. At that point, it didn't appear that there was, uh, you know, that the threat was too great. Um, but uh, for us, you know, the situation certainly changed a, a month ago and the severity and the, the seriousness of the issue dawned on us and certainly for us we've been um i suppose uh making contingency plans that um you know hoping for the best but uh you know planning for the worst and at this stage we're probably somewhere in between dave it's matthew johns here i'm just curious what's the plans for the playing group now because peter valandi said we'd love to see the competition start in a couple of weeks but realistically we just don't know i mean who knows you know the government are talking about these social restrictions you know stretching up to six months or maybe even more so you know you've got You've got players there who, um, you know, uh, from New South Wales, from Queensland, and there's talk of, you know, borders shutting possibly between New South Wales and Victoria. So what do you, what do, you do with the players? What, what are we going to do going forward? Yeah, well, one of those players is pretty close to your heart, I think, um, Matthew, and, uh, you know, he's a great young man. You, you guys should be really proud of him. But, um, you know, for us, the, the priority for our, for our club is always our, our staff and our players. Um, you know, of course, our members and our fans, and you know, we, we t we've taken steps all the way through to ensure, ensure as best that we could, uh, under strong medical advice and the guidance by our doctor, Dr. Jason Chan, to ensure their health and well-being, their safety is supported first and foremost. So for us, we're going to meet this morning. Um, we're meeting as play, you know, with a playing group. Uh, we're meeting with uh, with staff. Obviously, you know, keeping uh, keeping aware of social distancing requirements these days, which you know, is, is a need, um, but uh, certainly meeting with them and having a conversation about what this means in the foreseeable future. Uh, in the immediate future, right now, you know, the opportunity for players to go home, spend time with their families, they'll obviously be given a, a, a program to uh, do their best with with keeping fit. You know, those TRX machines are, are, are going to get a, a, you know, quite, a, quite a workout over the next period of time, I would imagine. But you know, for these guys, it, it's it, it you know it's uncertain. You know, they're trained in a certain way. They they you know they, they work on a on a timetable. Everything's prepared. Everything's ready to go to the to the sound of a bell for uh, for kickoff. And um, you know that'll be different. It's taken away from them after two weeks. But you know we're, we're like everyone else. You know, we're the club, the industry. No one's immune to this thing. You know, this is a pandemic impacting everyone right around the world. And you know, I'm sure the the level of anxiety and angst um, will be significant for um, for all, and and that's just not talking about Melbourne Storm or the NRL. That's that's the entire world. You know, we're all in this together, and 
you know, certainly we'll be looking after our people first and foremost, and that's our uh, that's our number one priority. Dave, it's Michael Ennis. Uh, you touched on a number of things there, which I'm I'm fascinated to to ask you about, in the sense that. There's so much uncertainty and fear um, in amongst the world at the moment. And for your players, you know, there's been a lot of publicity surrounding uh, their pay packets and, and the the inevitable fact that they're going to have to take pay cuts. Have you had any of those discussions yet? Have you had any players come to you in regards to um, the anxiety and the uncertainty and the mental stability around, you know, just that uncertainty? They're creatures of habit. The players love routine and they're not going to have any of that. Yeah, yeah, it's a good good question, Mick, and something that um, I think there's a number of us within the organisation, whether it's uh, Craig and, and Frank. Um, we've got three wonderful wellbeing staff. We've got a club psychologist that are, uh, have all been really conscious of that. And um, you know, uh, I think we you know we put we put our athletes, uh, you know, and, and we're sure they're remarkable people, remarkable athletes. Uh, they do wonderful things on a weekend. And we put them on a pedestal, but mm. they're still people at the end of the day. And um, you know they've they've still got families and 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 wives and uh, you know, well partners. Uh, they've got kids. You know, there's a number of newborns. Uh, they've got mortgages like everyone else. So you know, whilst I think uh, you know there there are people that are, are well paid. There are also those that um, you know are on minimum wage. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know we've got to ensure that uh, this isn't a, a blanket approach. You know, we've got to really individualise and personalise the care for our uh, for our playing group and and our staff. And to talk through ways that we can uh, do our uh, our absolute best, I can look them in the eye and say that we've worked really, uh, really hard and and over time with with uh, with all of us all of our team to ensure that uh, you know we all get get through this. Um, you know we look after each other, we stay connected, um, you take great care of uh, of your people, and uh, you know we, I think um, you know that's the that's the one thing we're all hold, holding on to hope here is or one thing we're holding on to is hope is that uh, you know we will get through the other side. What that looks like, we're not sure, um, but uh, you know we keep we are continually told by uh, you know, by the federal and state governments we will get to the other side. Uh, so we need to ensure that uh, we're working with these guys to uh, to help them through that. Dave, uh, self isolation is a bit of a new thing for some of us, and we're seeing people all around the world do it different ways. So Liam Gallagher re- rewording some of his songs. <laughs> Mike Tyson was having a boxing match with his with his poodle or something. <laughs> um, Cameron Munster, can I ask you, will you be giving any advice on how he should self-isolate? <laughs> I, I, I don't think there's any advice I could possibly give Cameron that'll, that'll help him, Matty. You, you, know him, you know him well as I do. and um, yeah, you know, I, I think it'll take Cameron about three minutes to be bored. I think there'll be um, a he- so, bit of head noise there, Dave, I, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, a, a little bit. But, uh, look, I, I know Cameron will, um, you know, he'll, when you peel through uh, through the larrikin that is on the outside, look, it, he'll uh, he'll have all the concerns that everyone else does, and 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 really for us, it's just been from the outset. You know, my, my role and, and all of our senior leaders around the club, Craig included, um, Cameron within within the playing group, Dale Fanuk and Jesse Bromwich. It's about you know cool, calm heads. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty. We're not we're not quite sure where you know where we're heading, or as I said, what it'll look like on the other side, but. Um, you know, we need to uh, to keep our, our heads cool and calm and uh, and work through it collectively. I think the Prime Minister on the weekend had some wonderful comments about, you know, we're all, all going to feel some pain here. So let's uh, let's not carry on. Let's uh, let's let's show compassion, show care, and uh, and we'll all get through this. Dave, over recent weeks, and we, we see what Peter Volandis and Todd Greenberg speak about, you know, even as as near as last night, talk about how all cards are still on the table in terms of uh, the future of the game and, and when it may resume. How has been the dialogue with the NRL about this possibility of all going to Queensland and how did the clubs and the players feel about that? Um, it, it, if, if I'm honest about the, uh, the scenario plannings of, uh, of taking a group to, uh, to, to one location, it, it's been somewhat limited, um, but we understand there's been some other, you know, pressing priorities. Um, and, and look, we can, we can appreciate, you know, why the competition was, was continued. We understand the challenge around, uh, you know, the viability of clubs, about the viability viability of the game as we know it right now um i understand the, the amount of stress and pressure that uh head office is under right right, right now uh, as are all clubs as are all industries uh, right across the world but you know for us as uh, you know, as we know it um we've offered our support um we're here to uh, to work collectively and collaboratively we want to do that with the game 
um, we want to share the responsibility. Uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, there's not a mortgage on good ideas. Uh, I think, um, you know, the opportunity there to get some sharp minds from around the border and tables. You know, you've got Bart Campbell, uh, Matthew Tripp down here in Melbourne, uh, incoming and outgoing chairs. Uh, Nick Pappas at South, Carl Morris at Broncos, uh, Nick Politis at, uh, at, at Roosters and many others right across the, uh, the league. You know, there's some really intelligent people there that uh, can get together, um, work through what, uh, what the, um, you know, the, the scenarios might look like on the other side, whenever that is, and we're not sure when that is. Uh, you know, the AFL called a stand down until May 31. We've left ours open. Um, Parliament, uh, I think, has been postponed until, uh, till August. So, you know, if you're going on those timelines, it's probably the back end of the year. Um, but, uh, you know, I, th- I think, we, as I said before, we're holding on to hope that we can get a competition away. Yeah. You know, uh, and that's something we can all hold on to. We're talking to Dave Donaghy, CEO of the Melbourne Storm. Dave, there is a crisis meeting at 9am uh, at the NRL, every single club involved. What answers would you like to put forward um, that you guys can then come back to clubland and, and you know, construct a plan and, and a survival plan? Well, I think it's really important, Yvonne, that um, there is a plan. Um, for, for, as I said, you know, there's four partners in the game. That was how the television rights uh, construct was... Um, was put together at the last uh, last television deal um, with the CBA um, and uh, and the club funding. You know, there's there's the head office, there's clubs, there's states, and there's players. Um, you know, the discussion around players you mentioned before, Mick. You know, that's that's for the players union and the and the NRL, and we'll certainly support our playing group. But you know, across the board, uh, you know, there needs to be a formulation of a. You know, we we know now that we've stopped. Uh, we've, we've we've paused. Sorry, I should say, but. Um, you know, we're going to pick that up at hopefully pick that up at some point again this year, and uh, you know we, we need to start working together around uh, you know if there's an in- material impact to, uh, you know, to to revenues, which which there will be, we're not immune to that. Um, we understand that's coming, how that's split up, uh, what the plan looks like uh, when we do come out of hiatus, um, and just uh, as I said, just stressing cool, calm heads. No doubt there'll be a lot of emotion. Um, but, uh, you know, we're all in this together. You know, you guys, um, the NRL clubs, players, uh, states, you know, all the way through from, uh, from you know, the highest, highest level uh, down to grassroots. You know, we want to see the game come out of this in whatever form it is, um, thriving, uh, ready to go, and uh, hopefully there'll be a strong bounce back. Dave Donaghy from the Melbourne Storm. Dr- troubling times for everyone. Really appreciate your time this morning and uh, best of luck and uh, give all our love and support to everyone from the Melbourne Storm. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. And just, just uh, you know, again, from, from our point, you know, we've approached uh, our players and our staff with, uh, with three things, you know, show compassion and care, um, stay connected and... Uh, and, and be kind and, uh, you know, hopefully uh, across society we continue to do that. It's uncertain times and uh, wish you, you know, especially all of our members and fans with everyone right across the rugby league community, just uh, good health and, um, and uh, take care of yourself.